Okay, today we are going to discuss elevations. And, well, what's an elevation? Well, an elevation is just a profile view that is orthographically projected of your design. So you will need your first floor plan, your second floor plan, and your site plan. That needs to be completed in order for this information to be transcribed into an elevation. And throughout this video, it'll start to make sense why it needs to be done. Um, because essentially you're taking the shape of the building and you're kind of just extruding it throughout the floors. First floor, second floor, and roof. So, uh, these are rendered with a little bit of color. I can show you how to do this in another video, uh, but right now let's get you to this point right here. This is where you need to get, and essentially what the elevations are for is for your client to be able to see what their building's gonna look like, what their house is gonna look like, you know, what, where, what their home, is it gonna feel homey? Homely, homey, <laughs> homely, you know, raise their children or, 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 or dogs, uh, army of pugs. I don't know. But typically your client, I have many copies as you can see. Uh, I photocopy these because going from here to here, there's a lot of experimentation that goes on with color, see what works, what doesn't work, different techniques and stuff like that. All the techniques are right and all the techniques are wrong. It it really depends on how how you feel when you do this. Again, this this should not feel like a chore. It should feel like this is fun. If it starts feeling like a chore, something something's not quite right. Change your technique uh, that best fits you your style of artistry. Um, this is what works best for me. I like it. It's simple. It's quick. It's easy. And can you get more detail than this? Yes, obviously you can. Um, but this, again, this is just the bare essentials to get you to understand what elevations are. And the elevation should be in the same scale as your floor plan. Notice 3 16 3 16 So without further ado, ah, also, um, you will need to know pertinent information. Ah, so these were the elevations that I drew from, uh, based off of the floor plans. You'll need to know information like your finished floor from finished floor, uh, your finished floor to finished ceiling as well. You'll need to know that information. Um, we'll go over why, but first. Uh, let me discuss the site plan that I photocopied. I photocopied this site plan from last week's tutorial. And this was what I drew in last week's tutorial. And I'm bringing this up because I had this issue and not to say that this is going to come out perfect every time you go to photocopy, but, um, this was my first photocopy and you can see there's a lot of grayish things going on that I really didn't want. So I centered it, photocopied again from my printer and I only had a little bit of grayish going on right here. This other gray, it was from the actual drawing itself where I shaded it in. So most of us, kind of give up after the first try where it's like, ah, this sucks. I don't like it. And then just toss it and, or, or don't deal with it at all. But the reality is if you're going to get through the rest of the semester and we're going to learn remotely, figure this out, try it a few times. I know ink is expensive. Just use, I just use black and white. And so once you figure it out, the, the, the cheaper it will be. And so try and center this image. And when I say image, I don't mean just this. I mean this, this, this right here. 
try and center this on that uh, screen. So when you do photocopy this from home, um, or if you take a picture of it uh, and then print it out, this information doesn't have this going on. Try and clean it up as best as you can. All right, that, that is my, my uh, quick announcement. Okay, so before we get into elevations, I will have to go over the elevations lecture a little bit. So, a building rests on the ground. Like so. And this is just a illust quick illustration of what the ground is. Uh, you'll have to uh, know that the building doesn't, the finished floor does not sit on the ground. Typically it goes up. And this is your slab on grade. This is the grade. Right, and this is why you have a few steps to go into your house. Typically this, in, well, at least in California, this is an uh, inch and a half to the finished floor. Like this. Let me do this in a different color. This is your finished floor. And your finished floor, and let me, let me do that on this side as well. Your finished floor will include your tiles, your um, carpet, hardwood floors, whatever marble, whatever type of finished floor you have. Um, but typically that sits on your foundation. And then from there, you will need to know, since we're doing two story, you would need to know, and let me just do this real quick. Your finished ceiling height. And, and then, from there, you will need to know the distance of the materials, and that will be your support materials for the second finished floor. On the second floor. And then it keeps going up. And I'm running out of paper, so we'll just do a little break line. And you will need to know the ceiling height from finished floor to finished ceiling on the second floor as well. And... And then from there, your roof is built up. And we already know the shape of the roof because we did that last week. And if you have various patios and trees and stuff like that, you are also going to put that in the elevation, depending on which elevation you choose. Now, uh, I'm not gonna mark this one up because this is pretty clean. Let me go ahead and mark this one up. Um, since I'm not going to use it anyway. Um, so for your elevations, you will do two elevations. One, either from the, uh, let me use a different color, front 
or back. Choose one, whichever one's more interesting. And if you choose the least interesting one, I'll have you do it again. Again, do the one that's most interesting. Challenge yourself. Right here, I can tell you this back part is boring because it doesn't have any of these pockets or things being extruded out. Right here, this is just flat. If you just give me a flat surface with windows, I'm gonna make you choose a different one. I'll go back and I'll look at your floor plan and I'll forcefully choose for you. So um, make sure you choose the most interesting side and go from there. This side is a little boring. This side's a little more interesting. So choose one side out of the two. And that's it. So I'm gonna choose this side and I'm gonna choose this side. Again, the most interesting ones from your floor plan perspective. Again, one that has shows dynamic depth uh, things going in, things going out. If you if you just show me a straight line, I'm not gonna cut it. Sorry, I'm sipping coffee, so I don't dry up on you. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the elevations. All right. So what you'll need is a copy of your first and second floor. And the reason why you'll need this is because you'll have to reference these when we shoot down the lines from here onto this paper. And that way, you're not measuring things all over again. You are just essentially ex creating an extension line where it should be, and then you're following up with the precise dimensioning of the distance between here and here, here and here, here and here. And so uh, let's just say for argument's sakes that this is eight feet. And just for this assignment, you can I don't know, let's just do uh, 12 inches here and then eight feet here um, for mine. Yours can be different. Um, this, if I would keep this at, at a foot just cause it's easier. Um, depending on the materials for your finished floor, this could be thinner or thicker depending on what they use right here. Um, it really depends, um, but I can tell you this one, this is this is a little overdone. Um, and not just the materials on the floor, the materials on the ceiling as well. The ceiling also has materials that, um, you know, you could have a, a false beam going through or several false beams going through. You can have soffits, you can have um, various things that make the ceiling very decorative up on the ceilings. And so let's just use 12 for this assignment um, for these support materials and finished floor and finished ceiling combined um, just to make it easy on ourselves. So if you have a 10 foot ceiling on the first floor and a nine foot ceiling on the second floor, you add that up in addition to another foot and you'll have your total building height. Now, we still have to factor in the roof and the overhang, oops, change the colors. So the roof and the overhang. Your overhang, you're really gonna have to decide how far over you want it to uh, hang over. Um, typical sizes, they range from a foot to all the way to two feet. It really depends on, on your design. If you're trying to cover a particular area, window, really get some shade um, because, you know, maybe on this side, there's a lot of uh, sun exposure. So it really varies. Um, but for argument's sake, let's just say I want this at uh, this distance from here to here. 
at 24 inches or two feet. And so I would always do this on every project. Uh, I would recommend that you do this, kind of pre-plan all the dimensions so you know what to expect uh, when you go and do this. And, oops, sorry, I paused there for the mail. I'm um, listening to the mailman. Um, and that way, you, you, you already have this planned out. You're good to go. Um, we'll talk about the roof slope a little bit. Um, typical roofs in, um, in California. It's 4 to 12, meaning for every 12 inches you go this way, you go up. Four inches, uh, a three to twelve is typical, as well. Um, you are going to have to decide. Um, well, eventually, it'll decide itself when you do do this. So, it might be higher. It might be higher. So, uh, when you go ahead and do this, you are quickly going to figure out. And, and I'll show you how to figure this out. And, and again, we just go from dead center to here, and then we just draw where this um, intersects at this point. So, but you'll find out what ratio it is. You don't. You don't have to predetermine that. That's the material and the um, what we drew on the site plan will kind of guide us as to what the ratio is. All right, with that being said, we already have a plan of how the elevation is going to go. But what we don't have is the information on where the, the windows or the doors are gonna be, uh, or any of the pockets if there's any pockets, you know, let's just say that's recessed in. Um, and then we could do a little bit of uh, shading. Let me see if I can. And which I highly recommend that you do if you don't have um, markers like such, uh, don't worry about it. You can use pencil, just, you know, figure out your medium. And, and run with it. You know, maybe there's shading like that, you know, because there's an overhang. Uh, you know, maybe there's shading over here on this side as well because of this overhang. Um, you know, you want it sleek and simple. Um, we'll explore color, like I said, in another video. If you guys want to play around with it and you have, you know, a, a medium, like some sort of alcohol-based marker. Um, we talked about this in class. Uh, something that has a chisel tip and a fine tip and this is the difference um, this is your chisel tip and this is your fine tip again if you're going to do uh, a little finer details to make things pop out um, I highly recommend Start investing in this. Uh, we've kind of talked about how you can find them on Amazon, uh, but don't order anything on Amazon. That's not essential right now. They're being bogged down with uh, the essentials. So um, please take that into consideration. Uh, if you absolutely have to use them or not, which I'm telling you, you don't. Black and white is fine. I'm okay with that. If anything, I'll show you how to do it on Photoshop. So. All right, with that being said, got my plan of action. Let me get situated here and I'm gonna go ahead and move. And I'm also gonna double check my camera to see if uh, this movement that I'm about to do is, is going to work for this space area. So if you could bear with me.
Okay, that works. Okay, let's do this. So just a reminder, make sure you, when you tape things down, there's no, um, your surface is clean and you pull your paper nice and tight on all corners. And go from there. Again, if you want to explore color, do not use your originals. Uh, for this one, do not use your originals. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack these and make sure that they're lined up. And I'm kind of going to hold this up to the light so I can see where they line up and go from there. And they line up right here. So just to be safe, I'm going to tape this down here. here and what I'm going to do is I'm just instead of having to measure this is already measured out so I'm just going to project the lines down from here and I will do an elevation of this side I already decided here what side I'm going to do here's my Side. So I got to flip this this way and I'm just going to show you how to do one elevation. You should be able to figure out how to do the other ones. Uh, it's fairly simple. Um, and go from there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this down and now let me see if this is in the shot. I just want to verify that you guys can see this. Okay, perfect. And let's go from here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this down because I want to be able to project the lines from here down onto this sheet right here. And so I'm going to tape this down because this is the second floor. And probably should have taken, no, yeah. let me change that. Screw it up. I thought I put the first floor on top. So let's change this real quick. Let's get the first floor on top and second floor on bottom. And you can clearly see, if you don't do this very often, <laughs> uh, you kind of forget a little bit, but that's okay. This is part of learning. All right, so this is definitely matched up. I'm going to tape it down on both sides. And you'll see why I tape it down on both sides. Um, I tape it down on both sides because I don't want this to shift in any way. I'm about to project these lines down to here because like I said, they're already pre-measured. And I'm gonna utilize, again, these, these are not the originals. I'm gonna fold this up. And I'm gonna tape, tape this down. Here, and probably here, because I don't want this to move. And this, I can tuck back or tape it down. Um, but I think I'm good to go. Let me verify that these are parallel, or I'm sorry, perpendicular to To my um and that's actually 
actually not too bad. Move that up. Probably should have did this before I taped it down, but hey. Whatever I did worked. So, <laughs> yeah, a little bit off. But that's all right. I, I'm, I'm more concerned with these, these points. So let's just move forward and say for the sake of argument that this is good to go. So your first uh, point of order will be to make a grounding line. Now, I kind of showed you what a grounding line is. Didn't go into detail on how to do it, but this shows the ground, the grade. So um, let me do a different color. Also known as grounding line. So um, we kind of have to add these up. So I got 8, 8, 16, 17, and I'm thinking that the apex of the roof, the very top might be five, five to six feet higher than the finished um, ceiling. So I'm going to kind of estimate where this is going to fall. Um, and when I say estimate, because I don't know the exact height of the roof yet. And again, we're using the same measurement as you are of the floor plan. And so if I add five to 17, that's 22 uh, feet. And what I'm doing right now is adding this up so I can center And once I center the, um, the page, uh, then I'll be good to go. I know this is kind of, this is centered. And even if it's not really centered, like we could photocopy it into a centered position, but try and practice this and get close as, as close as possible. Uh, I'm just getting out some tools that I probably should have got out earlier. My racing shield. Um, your AIMS lettering guide, and then that's it, we'll go from there. Okay. So, now that we know we got about 22 feet, so from here to here. I also wanna make room for my title. It's gonna say east, west, north, south elevation. Um, plus the scale, and um, and we don't need the north arrow on this plan, just your site plan and your floor plans. The elevations do not need a north arrow. So I want to say I'm good from here to about here. This this will be my my playing field, so to speak. Let me. Uh, Go really, really light. And we're good. We're good. Now I can, I don't know what that spot is, but I'm gonna get rid of it using Photoshop and I'll show you how to do that later. So we have the first floor and I'm gonna use my orange and I know that this goes down to here and this goes down to here okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the grounding line and how I'm gonna do that is I'm going to project this first floor line really really light down to here and here Wait. 
fold that up on. I realize that. My bad. This is why we're doing things like. So this is the first floor. Probably should have remembered I switched it, but oh well. It was fairly close. So. And the garage comes out to here. So your grounding line should extend a little bit further. And you can kind of eyeball it. I would go out like an inch, three quarters of an inch. Um, probably a little further than that. There we go. Now your grounding line should be very dark and very thick. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my nine. Uh, should be very prominent. And I would go down about this length. You can go down a little bit further on this. Um, I'm just using this as a guide for now because I like that size. I can go a little thicker. And now I can incrementally move my straight edge. and fill this line in. And there you go. Um, if you see striations, that's fine. Um, Try and fill them in as, as much as possible, but you know, for the sake of this video being as short as possible, um, we'll just move on. Okay, so we kind of already got the first floor primed and ready to go. Um, now this is a guesstimation, I haven't confirmed exactly how high this is going to go um, but we do need to go up from the from the first floor from this ground line a little bit and let's just say I'm gonna go 15 and a half inches I'm gonna make the front step uh, set a step seven inches a piece and go from there so, uh, 15 and a half inches. That's that. And then from there, go up eight feet, another foot. these same markings over here really really light there you go so I know for a fact that it, this line from here to here is is definite um, now I'm going to project down the, the windows and the doors and this is why I said we needed to gather the information of um, the windows, the window height. Um, but for this project, we, we can just, um, I mean, you can remeasure your window height on each room on your first floor if you want. And typically what you'll measure is you'll measure from the finished floor 
you'll measure from the finished floor, let me, finished floor to here. And this will give you your window seal height. And you should know the uh, measurement, let me use a different color. Should know the measurement from here to here as well and here to here on each window. Uh, same with every door. Now, when you go to measure your door, you have your door frame and your door. And in the door frame, you have this little notch that stops the door. And if I could just draw a section real quick. Your door frame will look something like this. And your door will stop up against this side, right here. So, uh, depending on the swing. And they, they make this like this because it's universal. You can interchangeably um, change the swing of the door, whether it's coming out or going in. Um, but, you know, for argument's sake, let's just say this is swinging this way up against here. And so when you measure, you don't measure from this edge here. You measure from, let me see, where's my, here. Right here. This line. This surface right here. Measure from that surface, and then on the other side, you'll see, you know, this same side uh, over here. So you, you want to measure, let me, oh, let's make this, there we go. You want to measure from here to here. And, and not this little door stop that's part of the door frame. So, um, if you've already measured that through um, your uh, field measurements, then you're ahead of the game. If you haven't, well, you got a little bit of more work to do. Um, but definitely the seal height, uh, the length, and the width of the doors and the windows. And typically, if you are going to do a set of construction documents, you are going to want to identify the type of door, whether it's solid or, um, or hollow. Uh, typically, your doors that lead to the outside are solid, so people don't kick in your door and, and do awful things that they do or uh, break in and, and um, you know, taking, start, um, taking your stuff. And so, you know, give me a moment. It's getting a little warm in my house. Taking my sweatshirt off. So once you got that information, um, you can go ahead and continue with uh, your elevations. And you can see why having this knowledge is important for elevations in just a moment. So... Right now, I'm gonna move this up and I am going to just guesstimate. Again, I'm just drawing lines. This is the frame. Of the window. I'll, I'll narrow down the height. Typical door sizes are 
two and a half feet to three feet. And again, I'm just going off of, I probably should have had a window in here as well, but it is what it is. If I have to change this, I'll have to change this here and here. Uh, but for argument's sake, let's just say um, it wasn't required. I put a fan in there or something. <laughs> no, it's still required. All right. So typically, your windows will match up with the door height. The door height is six foot eight. Um, some windows sometimes they vary. Sometimes they get bigger. Sometimes. Sometimes that the, the even though the window height and the the the, the door height matches, the, the window might be super tiny, but the the very top of the window and the very top of the door still matches up. And so we'll we'll go ahead and measure out the door first because we know the height of the door. Now, I can definitively say that this is the height of the door. And this is the height of this window, this window, and this window. Because we know that information. Um, but there is custom houses and there are various size windows that, you know, create a, a different feel. Um, and if you notice that, then, you know, take that into consideration. Um, but for argument's sake, for this video's sake, let's just go with that information. Okay, so now I'm doing a little cleanup as I go. Again, I went really light on purpose. So we can keep this video moving. Okay, uh, I probably can can go ahead and finish up the the windows and the doors. Um, so the distance from here to here, I'm gonna have to add here and at the bottom and so uh this is a garage window and so i am going to say that this window is three feet tall and that's going to be the height of that window this one is also going to be three feet tall well, you know what, let's make it two and a half because there's a set of stairs right there. I want to make this a little shorter, but I want uh, sunlight to uh, illuminate that hallway or that, that stairwell and some of the living room. The living room, uh, let's just make it four feet. Let's bring it down a little bit so we can get um, more light into the living room. Um, and not just the living room, but into the dining room. And you notice how I'm speaking in terms of how well lit things are going to be. These are things to consider when you are choosing your uh, window sizes. You know, like this bathroom, I don't need a four foot by four foot window chilling in this bathroom. 
you know, everybody be able to see, you know, everybody's business going on in that bathroom. This is a private area. You might want something that's, you know, um, two or three feet wide, but only, you know, one foot tall. And then it's just a little slider window. Um, and, and that's it. You, you don't necessarily need, you know, a giant window seeing everybody's business. And so you got to consider that when uh, you, you're choosing uh, windows in public areas and private areas. Now, you know, this is a public area and, you know, maybe, maybe this can be a, a window that opens up as a slider or maybe this window can open up, um, you know, as a, uh, a single hung or a double hung uh, window. Mm. Just take another sip of coffee. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and finalize this and make sure that and if you notice i'm not dragging i probably should have started from the top but that's all right okay and now i am going to go ahead and solidify this as the window sizes all worry about the details afterwards um, just so we can move this video right along okay cleanup crew let's clean things up uh, I'm not going to clean up these lines on the inside because I want to create the window frame so use my racing shield and Take all these unnecessary lines away. And that is the first floor. First floor is, is boring, but the second floor is a little bit more dynamic and, and that's okay. As long as I see some dynamic Dynamics in your elevations, that's that's what I care about. So we know this is the finished floor line right here. We're done with the first floor. I can go ahead and peel this back and reveal the second floor and what's going on on this side. And so now I can project that down onto here. I need to know the finished floor because of the window heights. The window sill height and the placement of the window because otherwise it's just arbitrary on on how you do it and that's not how it works we we base it off of the finished floor on the second floor and we go up from there much like how we did the first floor and so now uh, i'm just going to go ahead and continue um, this line work right here uh, this is flush and so again, I'm just gonna go really light. This is a little different over here. Um, this balcony lines up with, well, it's supposed to line up with this. Yeah, anyway, we'll go ahead and say that it's lined up. And this right here is, um, again, really, really light. That line goes down, this line goes down. Again, I want to kind of pass that up a little bit because I can just clean that up afterwards. And then from here, I know from the finished floor to the finished ceiling is eight feet. Go from there. Now I want to measure. And if you need to peel off the whole first floor, you can. Um, I like to leave it there for reference, but it 
it already peeled off itself. And so now I'm just gonna measure eight feet and that's the finished ceiling. Um, I'm not gonna quite draw the roof yet. I kind of need to see how far down it's going to go. Um, but you know, if I need a reference line, super, super light so you can erase it. And, and that's it. Whatever I did on the first floor, I'm gonna have to do on the second floor. And I'm going to treat this line right here, and again, you can go really, really light to faintly see where the finished floor line is. So you can start dropping your windows and your doors. And so, uh, well, there's not going to be any doors, but um, I know right here, this balcony, this wall for this balcony is going to be three feet. And that's three feet from the finished floor line. So actually I'm gonna make it three and a half. There we go. I think three feet is a little too low. So three and a half right there. And here is my balcony. Now I'm not going to finalize this line right here and make it as dark as I did that, but I can finalize this because this is flush. This is the garage and the balcony together. This, uh, if I use different materials, then yes, I can make this a fine line. But if this is all stucco and flush, you, you are not going to see the, this, these lines. But if I use wood, like a reclaimed wood or something, I don't know, some architectural um, uh, wood that, that looks really, really nice, um, then you will see the, the uh, lines. But, you know, if this is a wall that goes straight from the finished floor all the way up to three and a half feet, you are not going to see these lines. Or if you have some sort of railing system, then you would see the, you know, this line and this line. Um, but let's continue. I think, I think I want to make this wood. And so I'm going to show you the lines. because it is a different material. And I'm gonna go here. Perfect. And now I'm gonna start dropping down these windows. Again, finished floor, we don't know, but we can kind of guesstimate. You know, this is a master bedroom, so this is a private area. You don't want a whole lot. Or maybe you do, I don't know. <laughs> Show some stuff off to the neighbor. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, maybe your client does. But this is a master bedroom, and your your whole second floor is going to be dedicated to office space. So this very well may be, you know, some sort of conference room where a lot of lighting would do some good, or maybe not. You know, maybe you don't need as much because you're going to be showing slideshows and videos, or virtual walkthroughs and what have you through um, some sort of projector here. And, you know, maybe this, you know, these areas are, you know, they're definitely gonna be different from my second floor. My second floor is for um, a home and, and definitely not, you know, a, a home office hybrid. Okay, so here I put in a window and I'll tell you this much, this window is gonna be definitely smaller. Again, because these are private areas and we need to consider the private things that go on and the nature of this room. Um, this window's probably a little too close to that, but it's all right. Argument's sake, let's just say that. 
All right, so this is open to below, and I wanted to put more windows above the window below. Um, again, letting more light into the first floor, not just the first floor, but you know, also light into the play area uh, in this area as well. So if you have any open to below areas, um, you know, you might want to reconsider um, or consider putting in uh, windows that can bring in more natural light to particular areas um, that will help eliminate a lot of the cost of your um, operations during the daytime. Um, well, at least some of the electrical cost of operating during the, the daytime. You won't have to use um, a whole lot of light to illuminate um, the office. All right, so we know six, eight. Six feet, eight inches is the top. So I'm gonna measure out eight inches right here at the bottom. And here is six feet. So probably should have went a little higher. And I don't. If I measured that right. Yeah, that's eight feet. Okay. Yeah. No, perfect. So I probably should have went higher on these lines. And I'll go ahead and do that right now. But I know from this point. Go ahead and just settle this once in for all. Okay, I didn't do this line yet because I think I need to. go all right and now again I'm going to determine how high or how tall these um, are going to be let's make this four feet Uh, the bathroom, I'm going to make a foot. Actually, I'm going to make a foot and a half. There we go. Go from there. Decisions have been made. This one right here, I feel like I want to make that tall. I want to make that a real prominent window that lets a lot of light into this area right here. Um, so for this design, this is a, a play area for children. Um, you know, typically uh, what I was thinking, no, I don't want to say typically, but what I was thinking was, you know, maybe there could be like a TV game area, system area right here, whether it be some sort of 
game console, TV area, maybe some toys over here. And that, that way the kids can play um, or teenagers or what have you play in this area. Well, adults are downstairs, you know, doing adult um, duties like, I don't know, cooking and cleaning. Right? You know, just somewhere separate of uh, adults having to uh, maintain the home. I figured that a, a space like this would be uh, greatly utilized and probably annoying having to step on Legos and stuff getting into the master bedroom. So I don't know if I really thought this out very well, but I'm thinking, you know, as long as, um, you know, mom and dad or, or, or parents, I should say parents, parents, um, whether it be dad and dad, mom and mom, um, however the family dynamic is, can go downstairs, um, prep and cook a meal and, and, and not really bothered by um, any children feeling the need to interfere. Um, sometimes that happens. Uh, or, you know, it, they do have the option to, you know, have the children involved as well. So this was me more consider uh, be considerate of the children that, that would rather play than, than work. And, and then I can get stuff done in my house. Um, and so I, I, I thought that was neat. And then, you know, I, I guess at the end of the day, I could always just, you know, tell my son, hey, go up and clean your area. I don't want to step on a Lego. So, but I wanted this area well lit. This is why I had the slider door. Um, I have these windows and this little half wall right here. So they can look down and I can hear them. The sound will travel through the house and I'd be, I, I would, want to try and hear them as much as possible because um, if something goes down and when I say them it's typically uh, my son has a friend over or his cousin's over and um, but if you know your office space you know maybe you don't want to hear that maybe this needs to be blocked off or or maybe this area right here is a foyer and you you kind of do want to be able to hear if someone came through someone opened the front door and, and this is, this was your entryway. You kind of want to be able to hear that from your office to, the, to, to help out clients. And so uh, that's something to consider as well. And some of you have done that and incorporated that in your design. And I think it's wonderful um, that you have a system built into place uh, through your design to be able to hear clients come through. All right, so anyway, besides that, uh, let's get through this. Um, so let me measure this out. Again, I am using the 3 16th scale. And let's just make this window that big. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and decide on this as well. Let's make these four feet. I want to. I want the windows to be a little bit dynamic. And in their size, so let's go ahead and throw down these lines.
We'll get back onto the details of the window shortly. Um, let's just get through this real quick. All right, so that is this elevation mostly done. Um, this line right here is, is done. So let's, let's finalize it. And so I'm going to use a nine on this one, make that line real prominent. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use a seven. I got another line that I need more prominent than that. And what these lines will do is, well, the line weights will do is uh, give the illusion of depth. And we want that because Otherwise, it'll appear way too flat. And so depth and we'll give the perception uh, that there's a little bit more to it, but it, overall elevations are gonna be super flat. All right, so now we're done with the first floor and the second floor. And got a little cleanup to do. So, go ahead and clean up your drawing. And all I'm doing with my erasing shield is I'm str strategically placing the erasing shield in such a way to where I'm not going to erase the uh, intended lines. And I'll erase uh, a good chunk of those non-intended lines in order for me to erase as much as possible um, without having to lift up my erasing shield. And so that's why I typically like to use this uh, bigger portion of it. Of the, and, and you see smaller ones, and that's useful as well when you get into tinier places. Um, but I like to use this one right here because I can erase a lot and, and I won't uh, disrupt um, a whole lot as well. And so I do that because I want to save time. You know, these, these drawings are time consuming and I know they, they take a lot. So I try and reduce the amount of time, um, that it takes to, uh, by simplifying these different processes that I need to do in order to create them, if that makes any sense. So always try and think of ways and, and, and like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna draw a line, you know, this way, you know, I would do as many lines as, as you possibly can going horizontally. And then I would do as many lines as you can going vertically. And that way it saves you time from having to transition from going horizontal to vertical, back and forth, back and forth. That just eats up a lot of time. All right, so. Uh, let's see. So now I got to measure two feet this way. And actually, where is my garage? Oh, this is a completely different site plan <laughs> and completely different floor plan. So, uh, no, is it? No, it's the same. I'm tripping. Okay, so I need to do two feet from this right here. So, kind of. I wanted this patio to be a covered patio, so in the event it rains or whatever, that two feet offset from you know from from this here is enough to shield uh, this patio from rain. Um, and obviously it's not going to be like a violent rain, but you know, if it's sprinkling or it's coming down a little bit, you know, um, you know, the, the couple that's in here can go out into the balcony and just, and, you know, maybe enjoy the rain for a little bit, talk, you know, about their daily lives or, or, you know, goals or whatever. 
Um, and, and in that moment, they can go outside, um, close these doors and have a private conversation as long as, you know, there's no kids over here listening. But, um, but yeah, they can enjoy the rain. They can enjoy each other's company. If they have a cup of coffee, they can enjoy that as well. Um, and they're good to go. And so you notice how I'm in, I'm interjecting and, um, and certain situations and scenarios and, and how people conduct themselves in various rooms. You should be thinking like that. You should be thinking like that as an architect. You know, what you're gonna do in, in this particular space, in this particular space, this is what you need to be thinking about. And, and this is how you will progress in, in your designs and in your architecture. And so this is why I kind of tell a story to myself on what's gonna go on in, in, in this particular area. Me, uh, in particular, I, I like to enjoy a, a good balcony, you know, watch the sunrise, watch the sunset, have a good conversation, um, you know, maybe a, a bottle of wine out there or a cup of coffee, depending on what time of the day, or maybe they're interchangeable, I don't know. But that's what I think that goes on in this area, you know, maybe they're smokers and, and they wanna go out and, you know, have a cigarette or whatever, um, a cigar. Um, you know, I, it really depends on, on what you feel will go on in this area. And I, typically balconies for me, you know, a little snack, a little wine, or, you know, maybe a, a bagel with cream cheese and a cup of coffee. If I want to watch a sunrise or sunset, very depending on the time of day, uh, or whatever I'm in the mood for. Maybe I just want to go out there and chill and reflect and see uh, you know, what I really want to do with this part of my life. Uh, maybe set some new goals and just go out there by myself and think and not necessarily with a partner. So, um, you know, really think about that. All right. So, I drew this and we kind of did this. So... I got to measure the distance from here to here in order to get this right. And this was done at 3.30 seconds. So this is why it's important to have a roof plan. So when you go and do this, and this is really the only part you have to measure. So that it looks like it's five feet. We'll call that five feet. So the distance from here to here is five feet. And then it just goes up from there. And so this also, now remember this overhang I did at two feet. So let's consider that first. Where is, ah, three sixteenths. Two feet, and we have from here to here, five feet. So, this overhang will start right there. Uh, this overhang over here will start there as well. Now, I want to add a fascia. A fascia is typically that piece of wood. Uh, let's see I, uh, let me get a clean sheet. Oh, right, you know what? I'll just show you. On there. So, a fascia is considered a like that piece of wood that you see on this side. Uh, it could be done like that. Um, so, here's here's another fascia. It can be done like this. Um, and, and it could be very decorative. It could be something that's, well, that's not the fascia, but that that would be an extended um, roof rafter. And 
it could be done like that as well. So you, I will show you um, in a PowerPoint these various fascias and, and what to expect when you do design something like that. I can tell you this much, just keep it simple for now. Uh, when you get into CAD, you can get, it's easier to get more detailed like this. And so um, I would stick with something like this or something like that for now. And then when you get into intricate designs later, you can incorporate, you know, uh, any different kind of uh, roof rafter extension. Um, but the fascia is just that board that extends and um, it kind of hides a lot of the defects of the roof. Uh, and not necessarily that the roof is defective, but uh, it's the ending of materials that where it kind of hides. Um, so the, the boards will come out to here and it just kind of hides that if, you know, seeing board after board after board after board. So it just kind of just covers that in one false swoop. All right, and so I want the, I want to do a fascia and the fascia, um, fascia will start once I determine the roof. Uh, so let me work on this roof and the roof on this side, again, this will go this way and up, and from here, up as well. So, I need to get the middle from this point to this point. So I need to measure and calculate the exact middle, and then I'm just gonna draw a line up and, and see what this roof is going to look like. So, 3 sixteenths, here, here, 44, 44 feet. So at 22 feet is the middle. Now, I can decide that this goes five feet up from here. Or maybe I want to make it six feet, make it a little taller because I got this right here. So let's let's consider that as well. You know, maybe this go up three feet and then this goes up another four feet. So maybe let's make this seven feet. Again, we're trying to consider what the roof is going to look like. This goes to here, so let's do that. And go really light. Don't don't overcommit on this. Go really light because we need to determine the roof fascia and. There we go. So there's that part. This is the part from here to here is this part right here. And so I need to go up. Let's go up three feet. should be about right. We have to go up a little bit more and then we'll go up a little bit more, but I think that will fall in about this area as well, which we can measure. In fact, let's do that. Let's not guesstimate, let's just measure. So this is at 3.30 seconds. This is, let's see, 14. 14 feet. So,
Oops. Wrong, wrong scale. So 14 feet. There we go. And I'm just moving this up. I'm placing this at 14 feet. And once this hits the zero, that's where I will drop that measurement. And my... So I was pretty much on the money with that, that guess. And there you have it. There is your roof. Now, your fascia can come down eight feet. Um, now, it really depends on, let's see if I got another piece of paper, on your different roof styles. So, some roofs, like this one, if I was to draw this roof, I know it would look like this. And this is the fascia. And here is the portion of the uh, garage. Bear with my drawing. Um, so this is a gable roof. I might correct myself on that. I haven't done this in the... Yeah, I think it's a gable roof. Uh, and then there's a hipping gable, which is this, where they all meet at the same... or at, at, a, at a particular intersection, not just at that, that point. And so that looks more like this. And then here is your fascia. And then here is the house. So, and this is the hip and gable roof system. All right, so if I was to do the front end, this would look like This would kind of match up. And it would look something like this. Oops. Something like this. Yeah. And then here's the house. And there's the front door. So on and so forth. So you can see how this roof, roof line right here is continuous. And the fascia is also continuous. This should match up. As well. If you want to do it like that or like this. Should match up. Anyway. All right. I'm going to stab myself with my pencil. All right. So now I got to do the fascia. What size are the fascias? Well, let's just say um, different fascias are different. If you have a rain gutter and you need to show a rain gutter, you might want to have a thicker um, width of a fascia. Uh, you know, maybe eight inches is enough. Maybe you need to go 10 inches and then, you know, you can still have a fascia and a rain gutter or, you know, maybe eight inches is good. Maybe you don't really want to see, you know, a bottom half of a fascia and then you just have the rain gutter. So it really depends. Uh, I know for, for this area right here, on this style roof, you, you don't necessarily need a rain gutter in the front, but on the sides you will. Any, anywhere the water is running off to, but there's no wa there's no water running off into this front this front portion right here. So where the water runs off to, that's where you want to put a, a rain gutter. Uh, but for this exercise, don't worry about rain gutters. Just 
I'm, I'm satisfied with, you know, you guys getting the roof done and the fascia done. So don't worry about the rain gutters. Okay. So for this fascia, I'm just going to do uh, eight inches. And call it a day. And the eight inches goes underneath. And so I kind of overcommitted with that and I'll have to erase that. But the eight inches goes underneath and I'm just gonna go ahead and inscribe a, a line like that and go with um, a flat fascia. Now, if I wanted to go with a another type, I can go like this and you know make it fancy looking but i'm just gonna go flat make it easy on myself for this work and i know you're kind of getting a little more on the construction side of the information right now and that's okay ah don't forget the fascia over here has to match up as well and so um, let's go ahead and commit to this line and I'm gonna go lighter on this one because this is further away wait is it let me double check no it's not actually it matches up so this these lines need to be cleaned up because this is all part of one face let me show you so yeah I need to take this line out and that line does not need to be there. This is all one face that goes down this way. So I'll go ahead and fix that and then I'll show you what I mean um, by that. So that is all one, one line. So I'll have to fix that in my plan. And this, this you can show right here, you know, if you want to try this, it's up to you where the line thicknesses go from thicker to thinner because it's going away. You could do the same here. Um, but this thickness right here, I need to erase this. I also need to erase this. And this. As well. So just clean up as you go. Again, I overcommitted on this one um, so use this as an example of what not to do uh, but in the words of Bob Ross it was a happy accident <laughs> so let's go and just clean up everything This horizontal line I'm not too worried about because I'm about to darken it up. I'm gonna go ahead and use um, a nine on this. Really get it nice and thick because this part sticks out two feet away from the wall. So it should be thicker. attempt this transition 
I'm going a little thick to thinner. And there we go. So I'm okay with that. Good to go. Um, and that's an elevation. That's that's pretty much um, how it's going to be done. Um, this, not sure how it's going to be supported. I'm thinking cantilever because uh, I kind of want this open air. Um, but if it needs to be corrected with a post, you know, from here and here, then so be it. But I like it. I, I want to be able to sit in that area and kind of just feel like I'm floating. So, um, all right. That being said, let's let's start adding the details. I should be measuring this, but you know, for the sake of the video, let's speed this process up. Oops, forgot this one. You can see how this process goes faster if you do all the horizontal lines and the vertical lines all at once. Again, keep your line weights into consideration. Right now, um, I'm not so concerned with your window types. I just care that you know how to do an elevation. We'll get into window types when you get into CAD and other things. Um, get into the roof material. So, you know, show some roof material like this. Um, definitely, um, you know, this is why I brought this in. So you can show roof material. Um, you don't have to cover the whole roof, but, you know, do do some, uh, we'll do a little bit here, probably uh, a little bit here. Um, and then if this was stucco, use stucco. Um, and your final product should look uh, something like that. Toss in a roof. Um, 
I'll make another video. Uh, don't forget to add the title of the sheet, add foliage, and add people. So uh, you've already done people, you've already done bushes and a tree. So um, if that's in your site plan, I need to be able to see it on the sides. Uh, as long as it's within reasonable distance, um, if it's way over here, then you don't need to show that. As long as it's within reasonable distance of, of this. And so, and when I say reasonable distance, I mean from the ground line. If it's within this site of the ground line, the, the edge of this ground line, then, you know, put a tree in. Um, so I should probably have put a tree right here. According to this site plan, I have a, a, a huge palm tree. So I would do a palm tree right here or some other tree. Um, but that, that's pretty much it. This is this is a um, an elevation. Uh, we'll go over the window glazings and, and then we'll go over the, um, so you probably wanna put uh, a doorknob here. Um, this is a good tool to create doorknobs. Done. Um, the different material right here. Then probably use a tool like this. So I want to use uh, a wood. And uh, I'll show you how to, to add wood in color. Um, in terms of wood in, in black and white, that's fine. Um, stucco, stucco is really simple. Use your uh, various sizes. If you have various sizes, nine millimeter. Uh, if you don't, um, definitely use your lead holder. Change the variation of sizes. And add a stucco pattern. You get the idea and then change it up with the following. And there you go, you have stucco. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. There's a tree, definitely put a tree. This is a palm tree. You know, add a palm tree. Probably go a little darker with these spines. This is why I had you practice. You 
guys can get good at this. I think you guys get the idea. These are little dates. Look at that little sweet fruit. Don't forget to add shadowing. If you're gonna if you're gonna do this in color then you know minimize your shadowing and um, do it in color do your shadows in color and that's about it all right that's all I have for this tutorial um, go ahead and watch it and if you have questions we'll answer them in class thank you